Professor Solange, you've developed this uh, innovative and interdisciplinary approach to digital security at three levels for individuals, for organizations and also for states. Um, what would be your concrete advice for all, the, all of these three entities uh, to approach cyber security at a strategic as well as uh, at operational level? I think we have to understand that uh, risks are everywhere and uh, each time we connect a device on the internet, we connect our life and each device that can be co connected on the internet is hackable and we are very vulnerable because digital society, should it be from the electronic part of the data part of the software engineering, is not safe. We haven't designed cyberspace with security in mind. So we are thinking security now, and uh, security is always a cost. And you, we, we had to understand that we had to dedicate resources and money to master the risk. And risk is the way of living. You can take risk or not, and it's a choice also. And, but we are in a risky environment, so we have to admit that. And there is no more security, 100% security or safety. But if we rely upon all this technology, and this is very important for our life, for our business, for our economy, for our state sovereignty, we have to do something and to do it quickly. So what that means? That to make a risk assessment, to decide what is a critical risk, what's the risk we want to support or not, what we can afford to, to lose in terms of money, of time, of whatever. And we, we have to do this risk assessment very uh, deeply and very uh, accurately uh, and effectively well. And then we, we have to choose what is the level of risk we would like to accept. And then we perhaps we have to think about our practices. If it's too risky, perhaps we can forget the services. We are not obliged because it's not because ICT can propose the services that we have to use it. Perhaps it's time for us to decide what kind of life we want, what kind of risk we would like to support and perhaps not be so lazy, do something differently to reduce the risk. Don't expose ourselves. Your mother tell you when you was a baby, don't do that because it's risky. So perhaps with the ICT, we have to understand what is at risk and what we would like to preserve. And that is very important. And it's about culture. What are the fundamental values we would like to preserve uh, with the use of ICT? Is it privacy? Is it civil liberty? Is it freedom? Is it whatever? So we have to think about value, about fundamental right, fundamental value, and each country, each culture should, should have different value, and each country, region, could develop the vision of ICT and all the measures, strategic level, and the operational measures you can have to promote, to present, and to do that. But you have to need a vision. To, you need to, to think about where you want to go in 10 years, in 20 years. If you want to be dependent to a service provider, to put all your data on the same set of computer or service provider, or not, it's something very basic and very simple. Don't be foolish by technology um, and new religion about ICT. ICT is, is good things, but not for everything. So think about that and be aware of what you want to have or not, and try to do your best in this context. And you know, economic performance is a good thing, but not only. You can have a lot of problem with um, if you think only about uh, competitiveness, performance, economic return on investment. If you have a short-term vision, if you would like a long-term vision, you have to decide and not run, run, run. Perhaps sometimes it's good to stop, to look backward, and to think about forward. And the uh, individual has to um, to choose a kind of service, what kind of life they want to have this technology. And for me, for example, I don't want the technology or service provider decide for me what I have to do, when I have to do something or not. So it's, it's about liberties and uh, uh, choice to choice we have. But I think it's very difficult to resist or to say, no, I don't want this, because there's a mass uh, approach and everybody is doing that, but it's not because everybody are doing that that it's good for us. Don't just think about simple things. And um, why I go on the interdisciplinary approach? Because uh, I come from the technical side of computer science. You know, I have a PhD in computer science and telecommunication, and I've done a lot of cryptology and technology. But 
technology is not life, it's not enough. You cannot solve every human problem by a technology approach. And beyond technology, you have always human. And some human have a vision of a society that would like to impose this vision to the rest of the world. And perhaps we don't need to be in the same line of thinking. I think ICT could bring a lot of opportunities. Yeah. And, but you, when you think about opportunities, you have to think at the same time about how this technology could be misused. Uh, so what, what could be the illicit use of this technology or criminal use? So when you have something good, you have always something black or not so nice. And for that, you have to understand the risk, you have to understand how people operate, what are the state of men, uh, what are the actors, what are the tools of the, the use. And um, I think also you have to think about a continuum. Uh, you are connected sometimes, you are online, but most of the time you are offline, and you, when you like, you are online and offline, and there is a continuum. So you have to think about security as a physical security, the state of safety. You have to think about logical security, and you have to foster that uh, provider provide secure tools, not design security design in native mode. You don't have to think about put security after all. You have to preserve your value, and the technology and the services could help you to do that. And I think we have a lot of good innovation in security field that can help us to be in a reasonable state of security. Security could be done, and it depends on the, the voluntary uh, approach we have to that and what our ability to express our need. We have to require some security level, but we have also to think that security is always uh, something we can gain, but for that we have to pay for it. It costs money, it costs something of kind of liberties, and we have to decide what we would like to have. And the continuum of physical security, logical security is very important, not to make some dissociation of that. And I think for the state, it's also the same way of thinking. We have cyber security for the civil uh, environment, but we have to think about the military one. And cyber security should be in accordance with the cyber defense field. And we should learn how to work together and take the good thing from the defense sector, the good thing from the civil sector, and do something very new and uh, think the life differently. Because we have a shifting paradigm, we have in a rupture, we, the, the way of living, the way of, of doing everything can be changed by the use of technology, and we have to think out of the box. We cannot reproduce security as we have done from the last decade, the last uh, century, uh, because uh, technology has the power to change everything. So we should have, as a human, thinking a very different is the way we produce security. And one thing I guess is a problem that because when you need this political vision, it will take 10 years, 20 years to put into practices. And the biggest problem I think is that private company has a vision for the state. So be aware that don't be driven by the market. Be your choice should be driven by your political will. And that will be the big challenge to how to mitigate the risk, how to take advantage of the economic sector, the private sector, and how to to do it for the benefit of everyone, how to build an inclusive society, and that will be the real challenge. And technology could have uh, proposed or a new way to empower people, and I hope we will be able to do that. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Lange, for your time. Thank you. Thanks.